to go ahead. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Welcome to our very first session of the virtual lounge. So the hope is that we can have this as a weekly session where we can get together to exchange some ideas to discuss about issues, anything that is related to teaching and learning here at EUS. Um, last semester in spring, we had to transition from the face-to-face -face teaching to remote teaching. And for most of us, um, we were just worried about making it work. So today, we know that in the fall, we have to go and teach fully online for the first time for most of us. So the whole idea is not only about making it work, it's about going beyond uh, making it work because we want to make sure that we will have a very, very meaningful regular session for the student. So we're going to take this opportunity today because we have three wonderful faculty who taught in the summer fully online. So we are hoping to learn something from the experience and then we can share and use them in our classes in the fall. Okay, so before we start with the presentation, before I welcome all the three panelists, I just want to go over some basic administrative issues. So for a better experience, please use Google Chrome to log in into the session. If you have any issues with the connection, just try to log off and then try to log back in. And also, because I really want to have this session very, very interactive, so I'm giving everybody the ability to use the microphone to speak instead of just using the chat box. So because of that, if you're not speaking, please just mute or turn off your mic so that we do not have any echoes when the speaker actually speaks. Okay, so I'm going to welcome the three panelists. So we have Dr. Ahman Al-Ali from College of Engineering, and then we have Virginia Bodolika from SBA, and we also have Brad Kuraba from Department of English in CAS. So why don't we start? Abdurrahman, do you want to start first? Thank you again for being here with us. So why don't we start with Abdurrahman since you have some slides that you want to share? Abdul Rahman. Oh, okay, here you go. Do you hear me? I think um, I. Yes, yes you yeah, are clear. This is okay. only one page. Let me stop and share my slides. I don't know why it's not sharing. Um, let me share for. Let me just share it for you. Okay, share I have it, share it from your side. Yes. Okay. Okay, it's showing yeah, it's, now. It's showing now. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to share with you my experience during the summer. I was teaching microcontroller interface and programming. The course is four credits. Three credits are three lectures and one credit equivalent to three hours lab. With me was uh, engineer Ahmed Al Nabulsi which we, he made it easier for us to do the blending online learning between the lab and the theory, because we have to synchronize the lecture with the lab content. And uh, also I have, I have attended like uh, four online webinar from the IEEE so I kind of blended my experience and what I gained from the other webinars. First of all, please make a personal connection with the students and make virtual bonds with them. Remember, they are missing your eye contact, your body language, your physical presence. Teachers should build social presence and what do i mean by this the speaker 
one of the speaker she said she started to saying i have uh, four children two in the university one in the high school when she got married so she was trying to show us and tell us to tell the student she is a mother she also has the experience of the online learning for her family members and as a professor so you really need to share some of your social presence in there then she asked to develop the student's social presence and this is what we have done in our course we ask the student to add their clear professional photo to the calibrate profile we ask them to use the camera to introduce themselves in the first class whenever possible some of the students were reluctant some they related to their family and culture issue they don't want to put the camera so we did not force the camera we asked them to put their picture along with their names and um, we recommend that you use the camera during the office hours whenever possible you may use different platforms such as zoom and google meet for one-to-one -one or team meetings because the student sometimes they call you and they say during the office hours here we can use the zoom or the uh, the google we said oh, okay that's fine and keep in mind please the student do not have the sense of learning community where they supposed to be sitting in a classroom surrounded by their peers so they are not remember that the student do not have focus study environment in other words they have a short attention span if you look to this curve here the first 10 minutes you still capturing them and after 10 minutes things start to go south so you need you need to engage them during the class time frequently you may call some names or ask some short question an easy question and even from the same slide so you will keep their attention and talking about the social presence one of the students wrote in my summer evaluation he likes to know his students and often call their names which creates a bond some professors just teach and go but dr Al ali takes his time to know each of his students individually he is very understanding of the student situation so basically and i what i was doing did we switch one okay i just attend before the class 10 minutes some students they come we socialize we talk and i said you know i am as a father i have my daughter she just graduated she was in summer there uh, during spring and i know what's the pressure so let's work it together and have a, a useful course and useful meaning from the course remember the student do not have focus study environment instructors must consider the following challenges that their student experience while they are taking the courses remotely they, the student have siblings who are taking courses online at the same time at the same home their parents may be working online at the same time at the same home they have extended family members they are just roaming around the house making noise and they are not student some of them they have to share computers if you have five or four four to five member of the family they are they don't have five computers they have limited space and they do not have quiet room to attend the course they may have weak internet connection over it related interrupts most of it genuine but some not they use excuse in order to keep the student engaged focus and interactive what i have done i have printed hard copy of the student name in order to call them by names i had just like 24 students and i don't want to switch 
between the presentation and the soft copy of the student name. So I just have a handy hard copy and I call the names randomly between now and then. And to my surprise, if I call, for example, Muhammad, uh, uh, Muhammad, what do you think about like three plus four? And Muhammad is not there. He's attending the course, but he's not there. After two, three minutes, Muhammad will say, sir, I, I, I didn't hear you. My mic was off or something. No, Muhammad, he was not there. Somebody from the attendance from, from the class called Muhammad and told him, Al Ali asked about you. Just come and tell him I am here. One of the students came late and I said, hey, you are coming late. He said, there is a traffic. And I told him the traffic from the kitchen to the bedroom or to the dining room. So the student, they have some excuses. You need to really try to engage them and try to talk to them. Call some name and ask an easy question and a simple question that has an answer from the current slide. Use the collaborative tools, poll options to ask pop-up easy question, MCQ in term of yes or no. Whenever possible, if it's a homework or a project, divide the class into different breakout rooms. So you go and visit each room individually. So if you have like 20 students, you divide it into, let's say, 10 rooms, and whenever you switch to the room, there's a capability. You go and talk to these two students, and then you come back and you see somebody or, or other team, they raise their hands, you go and enter, entertain them. Ask, keep visiting each room periodically to address some question and check the progress. Attendance, call the names at the beginning of the class. You may join the session a bit earlier and some student will join as well. You can use the auto-generated attendance report to check latecomers and those who keep exiting and re-entering or leaving early. And I like the last one. One of the uh, speaker said, just get keynote speaker, get do virtual field trips whenever possible so you they will feel it's just like a class time, regular class. Now, adjust for extra time and technology. It takes from us double time to prepare for the lecture online. It takes about 30 minutes extra time to deliver it. And I wish somebody from the administration here to know that we really, it takes more time to prepare, more time to teach, more effort. And, and this is a good, we need to learn the technology. We need to keep up with it. We need to build a culture of business learning. Adjust for the technology. Don't stick only to the blackboard, especially in the office hour, during homework, during lab. Speak slowly to overcome the internet delay and latency between transmission and reception. Because I turn my iPad on as attendees and I look to my PC because I'm delivering, there is two to three second delay. So you really need to be slow. Ask the student to mute their mics and raise their hand, virtual hand to answer question. Now, provide more structured class notes that suits online delivery. You see, I, I made a very structured slide. I even look to the indentation, if you look at here. I just make it very pleasant to look. I add references. So leave extra space on the slide so that you can add your notes and answer question and writing if needed. And then the student, they can write here. You can write your using the Wacom one pen and you can write so the student, they will see the writing. This is very important. Otherwise, you start to write here and write here and write there. Please try to adjust your slide to do so. Uh, use your desktop or laptop screen and the tablet. And as you see here, 
you need to go and I, I learned this late in summer. I was struggling honestly. But after I asked Hisham, our IT guy, he told me just use the extended mode so you will have your PC or laptop on screen one, your tablet on screen two, use the extended mode. Then this is what's going to help you with. You go and share your desktop screen and you move your presentation. Sorry, you share your your desk, uh, you share your uh, tablet screen and then you move your PowerPoint to the uh, to the to the screen to the laptop the iPad then this is what you're gonna have this is your Ocam one and this is your actual screen on the PC or the laptop and you see here if you go to the presentation mode you will not see the student activity so you can write here and this is the student gonna see this is what, sorry, this is what you're then going to see. And this is, you are writing and you see this one. And on your computer, you will see this screen. And you will see who's there, who's sharing, who's going in and out. But here you don't see anybody. I advise you to practice before the lectures. Watch your recording after class and try to improve it your, in your next recording. This is really, you have to practice it. And if you're going to move the mouse from, this screen to this one you will struggle so you need need to get the mouse all the right all the way to the right and then you will see it on the other screen so please try to practice with this then we come to the assessment and my exam open note open book and whenever possible please do so this will help you in the proctoring divide your midterms and finals into more than one segment. What this is gonna help, if you have, let's say, 30 multiple questions, if you just use no bag tracking or bag tracking, some of the student will wait to the last minute and some of the student will finish, let's say, in 25 minutes and they have extra five minutes, they call their friends and they click, 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 so this is going to help the student to really collaborate more. So this is give the student, also give the student break between the two sessions, five minutes, just in case of somebody stuck, somebody interrupted in the first session, it will not propagate to the all the sessions. We struggle with this, but we learn how to do it. Then to design the question, use a question pools where different version in order to have least student cooperation during the exam. I have made four different questions and the four different questions we designed them here and thank you for Mr. Ahmed al nabulsi he's helping in this a lot. This question for example this is four bits this is eight bits this is 16 bit this is 12 bits but the same question so after we design four different question we go and the student will see only this question here they will see sorry why i designed four question here let me go to the previous one i think okay so when i run the exam each student will get the same question but with different small variable so they will get different answer so if they're gonna cheat if you have four bits two to power four sixteen and this question eight bit two to power eight two fifty six so if this guy gets six and has a friend or her friend get sixteen and here i have eight bits i know this is two to eight two fifty six so i know this student was cheating. He will get zero anyway, he or she. Then there's another question. You use calculated formula. This is the way we develop the question. We say, let's say, V multiplied by two to power B divided by 1,000. And I'm gonna 
while I'm designing the question, I have V and B. I will give them 20 different values. The system will generate for me. So Ahmed will see this question. Ahmed will see a question that has the variable V and B and his V is 20 and B is 6. So Ahmed will get the answer 128. Areej will get question 2 and the variable in her question 25 and 6, 1.6. And, and Jasim will get 45 and 6 and so on and so forth. And this is so easy. So they cannot, I mean, if, if Ahmed get this variable 1.28 and Areej call him and say, what's the answer? He will say 1.28. And she will write 1.280. So basically, ask the student to join the class session during the assessment. Sorry, ask the student to attend the main class before the exam. And you explain the exam for them in the main room because they're going to go to the exam session and they will come back and switch back and forth. So please try to explain for them what's the format, what they expect. Each question, 10 minutes. There is a break, five minutes. Then during the exam, you ask them, raise your virtual hand. Once a student raise the virtual hand, me or Ahmed, he's helping me during the exam, will take the student to private room and answer his or her question, and the other will not hear us. You can use the main room always. Let's say two or three students, they ask a question, and you find out there is really a genuine mistake. Then you go to the main room and say, please, I meant X minus two, not X plus two. Okay? Now, at the end, I would like to say, those who are preparing for remote learner should not think about the negative aspect of it. Please think about the positive aspect. In other words, look to the full half of the club, cup rather than the empty half. And if the faculty and the lab instructor, whenever there is a lab, develop an interesting material, for the student, believe me, they will be engaged and interact. We all should contribute to the blended learning culture. It says process in some books, but I will say it's a culture. We need to build a culture, even after the corona is over. Many others using this culture before the corona. Whatever available in the blackboard, it was available there, you know, for for long time, but we did not see it. So it's here to stay. It was somewhere else before Corona, and now we should keep it and be part of it and try to do the blended learning. This is my presentation. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I took that time, but go ahead, uh, Narita. Thank you so much, Abdul Rahman. You give a lot of um, interesting tips um, that I think a lot of people can just, you know, we, we are learning a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm the, um, Muhammad Ibrahim also, I guess. Thank you, that. thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, it takes me a couple of days, you know, it takes me a couple, couple of days. And <laughs> yeah. Ahmed and Nawilsi, Mr. Ahmed, watch my shoulder, help me. And Dr. Mm -hmm. Vayan, I called her just a while ago. I told her, just look what I have here. Yeah. And she also put some tips. So nice. I believe in this, you know, I believe in it. Mm -hmm. and, and listen, our graduate will go to the market and they will be compete with others on distant, uh, using this blending meetings. Why should I go to Abu Zabi to discuss something and it's available? And if we don't teach our students this, even let's say Ramadan, why we should have, why we shouldn't have the last week of Ramadan just online and keep the student at home? And, and so on and so forth. During the Christmas break, during holidays, other other national holiday, uh, you know, we take, yeah. and you cannot just take one course blending and one course on campus because Definitely. scheduling process, they will yeah. have scheduling problem. 
we have the opportunity now. So like you said, we are hoping that we can change the culture. Definitely. Thank you so much. Um, can can we keep the question to the end so that um, we're going to have all the speakers going to be able to share the experience? Can we go to Brad? Brad, are you ready? Yes, I'm here. Can, okay. can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Go all ahead, right, Brad. Great. Well, I won't, I'll just be very brief. I, I don't have any slides, but I just want to share my experience from teaching the summer. A lot of them overlap with uh, what Dr. Al Ali said. And uh, uh, just off the top, I'd probably say that we need, I think as instructors, you know, the spring, as you mentioned in the beginning, uh, Narita, that uh, we, it was an emergency situation, right? We were going in the spring and we didn't, uh, the students didn't expect us to be experts in teaching with the technology and online, but the summer was a little bit different. The, the expectations were that this was going to be a full online course and now it's even more. So the, the students are not just expecting us to fill in the gaps and make a patchwork, but they're, I think they're expecting us to have a quality online course. So that's important, I think, for all of us to, to recognize that we can't necessarily, and I think what's being lost in there is that online learning is actually totally different than classroom learning. Some principles are the same, but uh, it's very different. And, you know, uh, as a student, uh, I took some online courses and, and currently in my doctoral program is a lot online. So there's a lot of principles that wouldn't really work in the classroom that work online. And so anyway, uh, I, there are four things that I think are important to keep in mind. I'll just keep it brief and then if there's questions, we can talk about it. But uh, one first one was the lecture. Second was create community, which was similar to what Dr. Ali said. Third is feedback and fourth is assessment. So those are four things to keep in mind. And so what, for the lecture, what I've noticed and when I asked my students in the summer, I, I was constantly polling them, asking them for feedback in the spring and in the summer. And I would say about 80% of my students said that they prefer to have recorded uh, mini le lectures or mini lectures rather than the live synchronous session. So um, that worked well for me. I started to transition less from, whereas in the spring, I would just try to recreate the classroom online and Blackboard Collaborate. And then in the summer, I decided to have more of a mix. So I would, instead of having a full course lecture, I would maybe break it up into uh, two or three small video lectures, post them on iLearn, let the students watch them, and then use the synchronous uh, sessions to, for question and answer, uh, for uh, clarifying some of the things in the lecture, and for building the, the community. So, you know, it might not work for every course, but I think we, I think that's a, it's a good tip. The students like it. Uh, they can learn at their own pace, and that really is what online learning is about. Uh, we can't really re re replicate the classroom. Uh, I would just say keep the lectures to 15 minutes or less. That's probably about the the the, the, uh, the max online, especially if it's a recorded session. Um, I used a website called Screencast-O-Matic. I can type it in the chat box, but it's a way to uh, record your screen. Uh, one second. It's a free website, and um, you can record what's ever on your screen. So if you have a PowerPoint presentation or something on iLearn, and uh, you can save it as an MP4 file or a YouTube video, and you can share the link with your students. Uh, the free, you have about 15 minutes only, I think, for the free version. And if you, if you pay for it, uh, you get unlimited uh, time for, to, to record your video. So it was really useful for me. The students like that. Um, and that was my, so the, that was the first point is the lecture. Um, the second one was create community, which is similar. I think everybody uh, wants to do that. It's difficult online, but uh, you know, I use things like the, uh, having the students, you know, put, turn their cameras on, turn their audio on, use the breakout groups, which I think we're all familiar with at this point. Uh, the other thing was I'm gonna start using more is the discussion uh, function on, on uh, iLearn. So you can have students, and I'm actually going to grade this this semester, where the students will have to post a discussion once a week and then reply to two other uh, discussion posts uh, uh, in order to get a grade uh, for that. So that's it's all available on all of our iLearn. You, you can see it as a discussion. You just can create a discussion question, have students go in, and create a post, and respond to each other. Uh, office hours was big. Uh, I, I had a uh, very successful sort of open office hours. People could stop in, ask questions on Blackboard Collaborate. So that was really useful. Um, 
uh, feedback is was huge for me, and I say, if, uh, especially for my courses I teach, and I think uh, most of the humanities, if we have any writing that we're uh, grading, then Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Slides, it's all the whole suite of Google uh, was always really useful for me, but uh, it became so relevant and so important in, in online teaching. I create a class section in Google Drive and I invite the students to create a folder and they put all their work in there. And if they, for example, come to my office hours on Blackboard Collaborate, we can both go into the Google Drive folder. We can share, they, we can at the same time uh, chat, I can write comments, we can see what we're doing. So I was able to give really good feedback, positive feedback. They can also do it with each other. They can share uh, their folder with uh, classmates and work together collaboratively. So I think that was really important. Um, and the last one was uh, was assessment. And again, this is a difficult thing, but I know the university was, you know, at the end of the spring trying to encourage faculty to change their idea of what assessment is. It doesn't necessarily have to be a multiple choice question. It could be, for example, a more collaborative idea of what assessment is, so group work or project-based learning, these, these types of things. For my course, I can definitely do it. For others, I would encourage you to just maybe be creative and see what you can do. The students, I think, enjoy other types of assessment. There's less chance of either plagiarism in my case or cheating maybe in other fields. So uh, if there's a, a purpose to the assessment, if it's practical, if it's project-based, if it's collaborative, the students tend to, I think, uh, take it more seriously. They get something out of it. It's more useful for them. So. That's something at the department level, for, depending on what you're teaching, that would be, I think, important. But uh, I found those four things are the big, huge, big principles. And some of those things, again, are the same when you're teaching online, but some of them are, I think, will find this semester, and maybe this will, con you know, who knows how long this will continue. Hopefully, we'll be teaching face-to-face -face in the spring, but who knows. But again, some of these things really, I think we need to change. It, it, it'll help, I think it helped me a lot and helped the students to think of this as a different situation, not just replicating, again, the classroom environment. So those four things, I'd be happy to, that's all I've got, but happy to answer questions or get into more specifics uh, later. So thanks. Thank you so much, Brad. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised that to hear that um, you mentioned about using more of the recording of your session, of your, of your lecture itself. So mm. kind of, um, having a mix of synchronous and synchronous, because I guess early this week, or maybe last week, actually late last week, um, Harvard hmm. Business School published a very new article and also they specifically mentioned about using more method of asynchronous in the classroom instead of just having a live session with hmm. the student because it's going to help them um, a lot more when they come to mm. class, like you said, you know, you're going to spend more time doing a lot of exercises and activities with them. So I'm, I'm very happy to hear that, you know, you actually are thinking about doing that. Yeah, really, I did in the summer. And again, as a, you know, I've, I've been exposed to that as a student. It just, you, you can either record your lectures, of course, and students can watch mm. that over and over again, or you can break it up into very interesting, maybe 10 minute bits based on the content that you're teaching. And then I think it's a little bit more powerful and more interesting for the students. But it definitely yeah. take a lot more time from you. Yeah, for sure. But you can use them over and over again. You know, it's something, you know, I'm, I'm creating a library of lectures that I can use. So, yeah. you know, uh, this semester, next semester, who knows if this course yeah. will be, my class may be a hybrid course forever. <laughs> you know, right. Right. I'm not sure. But uh, so I'm building a library that I can use for the future. Yeah. I, and I think uh, it's, it's, it could be useful for others, too. Exactly. I mean, that, that, yeah, the kind of stuff that we can always share with one another, mm. you know, to help sure. teaching in the future as well. So because yeah. again, nobody knows what's going to happen. It will just might just take for another right. year for us to just go online. <laughs> yeah, don't, we don't know. Could be here for a long time. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, Brad. Again, um, just yeah. just please stay with us because I know that we might have some more questions later at the end from um the participant here. So why sure. don't we go with Virginia, and then we're going to come back and we're going to have more interaction later on. Virginia? Yes, I'm here. Um, thank you to both of my colleagues. I mean, very, very comprehensive presentation. So I don't know what is left for me to say. Um, but I think I still will have something interesting to say, because I do like to do things which are not traditional. So you see that there is no camera over there. 
So that's exactly how was my summer. No camera and no emphasis on something that will push the students to actually show their face. And actually, I also like to use a lot of creative, innovative types of presentations and assignments where I actually ask them to turn the disadvantage into opportunity. Like, for instance, make a presentation where nobody can see you and then still convince. But obviously, it all depends on the type of their course that you are teaching, right? It's not always relevant for some courses. I only read the title of the course that Abdul Rahman taught and I got scared already, right? So I guess this, without seeing the numbers, it's going to be very difficult to make a convincing presentation when nobody sees you, right? But I taught a low level course, an upper level course, and both of them are very heavy on innovation. So it's courses which are open to discussion, strategy, management, innovation management, and things like that. Right, so those are courses where you can try doing those things, right? Because it is the course in itself, it's very open to those type of creative assignments. Um, obviously, we cannot stop emphasizing the importance of technology. Technology, and we had amazing support from IT during the summer. Another thing, so techno, I'll not repeat, all using all those kind of things, it's, it's, uh, it's really very important. We had that support and all those webinars and seminars and things and whatever we wanted something, so people were there for us. So that's amazing and I applaud really the IT from, uh, from AOS. Um, another thing, um, trying not to, because I, I've seen that there are a lot of things we can do with technology. But at the same time, I've seen that my students were getting really tired. And as we talk about um, their technology and so many possibilities that technology offers, we also talk about the disruptions. And Abdul Rahman mentioned there are so many disruptions, there is no focus on all this. And part of not asking them to use camera was also to have them focused on one thing. One time that a couple of students put the camera, so we spent half an hour, everybody talking about the background, the flowers, the things, the bed that was in the back, uh, in the bedroom and things like that, right? So uh, people use that as an excuse to actually basically to make the class shorter. So I found that cameras, well, uh, can be used if students want to, but actually it does not deprive them to have a very good learning experience. And it worked really, really very well during the summer. Uh, I also found that students were actually having a much better experience in summer when we started from the same ground and finished at the same ground, rather than in spring. So in spring, we were actually disrupted. We started with one thing and then we transitioned and there were a lot of anxiety and a lot of things. In summer, it was so really smooth and I was even more surprised that my younger generation, my enter, entry level course, uh, students had even better experience than the ones who were about to graduate. Because one of the courses is the capstone where I think I had half of the students who were graduating that semester. So they were a little bit sad about the closing of those four or five years at the US being virtual and not really physical. Um, Another thing, so the, the challenges, of course, technology, all those type of things that we can we can do to see whether the students are engaged, whether they are listening and all this. So breakout groups, entering in each of those groups, making them to uh, discuss, uh, using poll questions. So I found that as a nice thing. So a poll question about what do you think about what I just said? Da, da, da. And then you see students who are not really voting. <laughs> so basically they're connected, but they are not really there or maybe in the kitchen having, grabbing a coffee or something like that. So try to turn this as, uh, uh, into, into something that will engage you and say, hey, hello, who is there close to, uh, to, to, to call Mohammed or whoever, Fatima, who is not answering the poll? And I think this was also a nice way to actually make them even bond and connect to each other. Because uh, if there is this social pressure of saying you are connected, but you're also there, right? So answer uh, all the poll questions, uh, um, call uh, uh, whoever they are, Noor, and ask Noor, uh, what do you think, how this and that connects to that and that, right? So uh, all those techniques, uh, basically to make them uh, um, feel that there is a, this social bond, this connection, and then they can connect each other to each other very well, right? Um, another thing that made maybe my transitioning to this fully online uh, thing, because one of the preoccupations that we all had was assessment. And for me, it was really smooth. Why? Because one year ago, I transitioned to fully open books exams, right? Open books, open notes, open material, everything, right? To embrace this uh, mentality of open source economy and things like that, sharing economy, circular economy. So everything is connected to everything. And plus, my courses, again, it's strategy, 
So basically everything that we are talking about is strategy. So what I found also relevant in using these assessments, that I, which was already since one year ago an open book, so it was quite easy for me to do that also uh, in a virtual environment. So no stress about uh, uh, exactly how to assess them. They were used to those open-ended questions. But what I made more specific is that I use very heavily business news. So basically yesterday, that the national article yesterday, talking about this and that and that. How would you relate to the chapter in the strategy that we talk about this and that and that, right? So that made it uh, in a way that nobody, and the question was framed in a way that nobody who is not that Mohammed and Noor and Fatma who is registered in my course and who attend my course could answer the question that was asked. Because it is really heavily related to the content of the course together with exactly the discussion of the business news that happened yesterday, the day before, or even this morning. Right? So that made it really um, natural, uh, even in a virtual environment where a student, where all this academic integrity and all this was not a question because nobody, a student who graduated one year ago couldn't answer the question unless that person is really the one who is registered, who is attending the course and who is listening to the material and doing the required reading. Right. Um, some of the challenges, if I were to say, there was only, I think, uh, the situation of because majority of students were dispersed, right? And we talk again, a lot of things that we can do with technology, but not everybody has the same access uh, and smoothness with technology. So my breakout groups in many, if you have a class of 20 students, sometimes it really doesn't work very well, particularly uh, now I'll have 50 minute classes. We had one hour and 30, so it was good. But in the environment where somebody is in Ethiopia, another one is in Morocco, another one is in somewhere in Europe, so in India and Pakistan, and they're all different uh, also time frames uh, which they could adjust to but the problem was really the connection so you break them out in groups and you start entering one group which is formed of three students two of the students have connect connectivity and it's not purposeful you see that they are trying back and back again to reconnect and again they're uh, dropping uh, and then they're reconnecting so it disturbs a little bit and i think with a class of 50 minutes it, 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 there is that much that you can do so it's beyond students control right so this can be a, an issue so i had to consider uh, really to give a little bit more time like maybe one hour instead of uh, just half an hour for doing those things to consider for all those minor disruptions that happens and maybe one uh, one situation but i think now we are all okay with that i had one situation of a student who was in ethiopia and then if you know during the summer there was uh, i think two or three weeks when the government shut down completely the internet connection right so it was completely out of the student control so student was there she was doing more or less fine in the course up till that moment and then three weeks just before the ending and uh, the AOS admin reacted extremely well so the, we found the solution but it's important to know uh, that in a situation when it's something beyond our control beyond our professor's control beyond student control I would advise to refer that to the administration uh, they have a very good uh, plan of how to deal in those situations when things are out of student control and students cannot really uh, come back when the semester is already over so they found an amazing solution to the student, offered like three, four different options to the student, and the student selected one. So this is something that I would I would uh, really recommend doing in case there are some extreme situations like that. And to tell you the truth, by now, to conclude with uh, my my um, kind of experience that I had uh, in summer as opposed to spring, I think we are getting better, <laughs> all of us with that. I think students enjoy that much more. I found the difference between spring and summer students enjoy and took it like it is normal and i think there is uh, we are somewhere at the point of no return um fully face to face i don't think we'll ever come back to that because we see all the universities are transitioning and all those ideas synchronous asynchronous and all this uh, is definitely going to be there and it's going to stay so it's good that we are learning that and we have to learn just on the fly that's it for me <laughs> Thank you so yes, much, Virginia. Uh, I, I just want to just have one comment on the open uh, book, open notes. Honestly, I've been doing this for the last five, six years, and it's amazing, you know. If I don't challenge the student memory and try to operate at their resonant frequency, if I hit the drum at their resonant frequency, they will dance.
maximum output because uh, they are coming with brilliant idea, better than what I expect, you know. So open book, open note, it's the trend and we should not challenge their memory because they have the information in their hand, right? They can immediately yes. Yes. search the Library of Congress within one minute. Okay. Yes, 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 definitely, yes. I totally agree with that. We have to change the culture again, the mentality of the student. If we test them on something that is practical, on um, something that is more critical, more analytical, then they're going to think it's going to be harder for them to cheat, just like what Virginia um, just said. I mean, try to make it a little bit difficult for them to cheat. <laughs> so yeah, definitely, we have to try to incorporate that more and more often. Um, I have a question for you, Virginia. It was such an interesting, um, I guess, a take from you because I've never heard so far from anybody who's teaching without turning the camera on. And I'm so surprised that it worked very well for you. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I always, uh, that's, that's the thing, that I challenge myself to challenge students, right? And always, because again, it's strategy. And what I tell them, guys, if you finish my course and you say it was boring, then I don't want to see you again. <laughs> no, obviously, I don't see them like that. But I say, guys, if you say strategy is boring, then life is boring because everything in life is strategy, is innovation, is creativity and all this. So I even take, and that's another way where I said, guys, camera, because they were like, professor, we are so sincerely, and they come, uh, like that connection, personal vibe that you want to, to get to them. They say, professor, sincerely, I'm still in bed. Can I not put my camera? And I say, you know what? You know what? Sincerely, I'm still in bed too. You know what? Don't put your camera. I'm like, okay. And this is kind of kind of a joke which predisposed them to really share their opinions. But again, it's a course. It's my course. It's a course where um, reflection, where sharing, where thinking about what was going on. Because I was really saying, guys, tonight, tomorrow morning, we, because it's every single day, obviously, we're gonna discuss about the national, the Halish time, the Gulf News uh, article. This. So how would, if you were to run that company, open this company, how would you embed this new creative uh, idea into this and that? Come up with an idea which will challenge uh, that. Imagine that nobody sees you any way to do this and that. So there was oh, uh, another activity I always do, like uh, use your hobby, things that you love in life, and then monetize your hobby in a way that, so that you create meaning and happiness and things like that, using strategy concept that we've seen in class. So, and it worked really well. Sincerely, and even students, wow. like not even 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 the cameras and things like that, they said, you know what, we are starting to get tired of being bombarded by so many technological webinar, uh, this that. So can we take a little bit of break? So I got this comment, <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> good, yeah. it works for me. As long as you promise you're gonna talk. <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah, that's the strategy for life. Basically, we have to get used to it. And I will take uh, colleague Muhammad Ibrahim a question. Yes, please, I think the you. culture, the culture of uh, online learning, it's not the responsibility of AUS only. We all, as a society, the high schools, universities, and the ministry should be should make it policy. You know, so the students they should come up with some background. They should start from the high school. And and we build up on that. That's my comment on that. Does anybody else have um, would like to discuss that question? Yeah, you see, you see what happens? <laughs> we have new students over there. <laughs> the same thing when you put camera on. <laughs> Sometimes some dogs, some cats jumping in the screen. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, um, Brad and Virginia, do you want mm. to answer Muhammad's question? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's a good question. I think that's what we're all trying to figure out. But if you look at if we look at what traditional teaching methods are which I think of them as more teacher-centered, lecture-based, and rote memorization that goes all the way to the assessments, then we have an opportunity to change those couple of those things. And, you know, just by the nature of distance learning, you know, learning is ubiquitous. It's everywhere now. It's, you know, so that, that can change everything. That changes the way that the students study. 
changes the way that they take our information or lectures and how they process it, how they work with each other. So, you know, it, it's this is the question of sort of what education is going for. And I think we need to, as educators, we need to be open to making it look different than what we're used to. And that's kind of a scary thing because I think the future of education, in a way, it takes us out of the equation a lot of it, right? We become more facilitators rather than the owners of all the knowledge because the knowledge is everywhere now, right? So we just have to be okay with that and work together, I think. Uh, and I think it's cooperation between faculty. There's, so there's lots of opportunities. It's going to start at the department level, maybe even higher and go down. But, you know, I think uh, I think that's why it's a bit difficult because it does, it, it challenges our role uh, in the classroom. And so, you know, that's maybe a little bit scary. Yeah, and I would I, like Maya, I, sorry, would like Maya to elaborate on her last class experience where she got the student dress up and came on the camera. Maya, can what? you elaborate? Yeah, wait, I guess Virginia has something to say about um, what okay, Muhammad has. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Norita. I completely agree with that. There is, a, like, we had the, uh, uh, always that, that issue in our well, research, we also talked about that, that the dilemma between sh to share or not to share. And we always uh, knew that if we share, there is always this risk of people taking our knowledge and then uh, leaving us aside. And we understood that in, in the era of uh, sharing economy, obviously, to share is better than not to share, right? So there is no way to fight that. It's scary, completely agree. It's scary because it takes us away from the equation and we are still there saying, oh my God, how can we actually be indispensable to that teaching education? But again, we have to embrace this new trend and this the new trend is really co-creation. And actually a couple of years ago, I got this, again, this crazy idea of actually putting the student at the center of their of the creation of the course. And I do create some small, um, attempts of having uh, the co-creation uh, of their of their of the course with the, together with the students and even giving them more power to create the course uh, by having uh, mini assignments and mini exercises like you are the teacher of the day. So what would you do with that and that? And I give them a framework. Uh, uh, within which they can play, what they can do, they cannot do, and then they can run like half an hour of a session uh, in order to say, if you were ideally as a professor today with your mind, knowing what is going on, what would you do? And I give them the center stage to do that. Because at the beginning, they were quite shy with this idea of co-creation. And if we see all the HBR readings, on, they all talk about putting the student at the center, making the student to actually create the course together with you. It's challenging. It's scaring us because then the student becomes the teacher himself, herself, and that's quite scary. But again, we are that sharing economy. There is no way back. There is no return to, to that past normal. There is a new and the next normal that will co-create definitely in the future. Yes, I totally agree with that, definitely. I mean, our students are so used to the whole concept of co-creation. I mean, the whole social media is all about co-creation. It's about they themselves create the content. So I kind of happy in a sense that this um, whole COVID give us the opportunity to actually get together and practice on whatever that we keep on preaching before that we always want to focus on the student, we want to collaborate more, and now we have the chance to do all that. So yeah, that, that's kind of nice, I suppose, in a sense, it's a blessing in a sense. Um, do we have, um, I guess we have a few more comments here. Um, Ahmad is saying also about, yeah, even the Ministry of Education um, right now is pushing more towards that, definitely, yes. I guess this is a good opportunity for everybody. Um, to actually embrace on the fact that this might just be the future of education um, in the future, definitely. Um, any other comments? Any anything else? I mean, yes, I know that Rama wants to hear about me. <laughs> yeah, me about the experience. Hello, everyone. Sorry, I was late. We had a department meeting at the same time, so I came as soon as we finished. Um, yeah, so with the summer, I I understand what Virginia is saying about distractions with the camera and stuff. But personally, I like to see my students. I like to see them, like their faces. And not everyone wanted to put on the camera from the beginning, so it's, it was fine. It was OK. But then on two occasions in the summer course, I told them, like, listen, we have to see each other. So one time we agreed we're going all to turn on the cameras. 
they really loved it and they they said that oh we feel that we know our colleagues better now um, and then the last day of classes that was the really big one okay we said this is a special day we're going to celebrate together the end of the semester we even had a dress code that was inspired by one of the students who was always wearing a hoodie whenever he had the camera on so we said okay we're all going to wear a hoodie on that day including myself everyone get your favorite drink and we're going to have the cameras on throughout the whole class we we all did it they loved it it was a really nice end to the semester really Thank you. Yeah, I think that's really nice. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, having a sense of community yeah. in a way. And Halloween is very soon, I suppose. So <laughs> this fall, we can all dress up. Yeah. Um, I, Brad, I have a question for you, actually, about um, about using external application, because I know that people in CAS, um, especially when, when you teach um, humanities and mm -hmm. where you use a lot of writings. Do you use um, or do you intend to use um, application like perusal or hypothesis or anything else that I kind of, you know, for the collaboration purposes for the student and also to, to kind of encourage students to read particular chapters, let's say, or topics? I'm sorry, I lost you about halfway through the question. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just, I was just um, asking about do you have any intention to use um, an external application such as perusal or hypothesis um, where students actually collaborate in terms of annotation and readings? Uh, yeah, there's a few that uh, what, I, what I've used, I've just been using Google Classroom and Google, not Classroom, but Google Drive and things like that. But other, I know in the English department, other colleagues have used uh, some, uh, some external applications for collaborative writing. I haven't used them personally, but uh, I, what I did last semester was I had my students create a personal blog and they could uh, they could upload uh, more multimodal kind of writing so they could add videos and pictures and things. So Wix.com is a very simple website that it's free. Um, students can create a, their own personal website and then use it as a blog basically. And it's a good way uh, I, the way I used it in the summer was as an introductory writing so they could post personal things about themselves as personal as they wanted it to be because they would share it with the class and myself. But it was a way to introduce each other and they, they could share their Instagram posts and things like that. So it was a little bit more interactive and more of their, more of their style, I guess. So, so Wix.com is good. There's a few others I have. Uh, someone in my department uh, gave a presentation on this and I have lots of resources. So. I can share that with you in the future, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of great things out there that to encourage yeah. cooperative learning, collaborative writing, and things like that. Great, great. Thank you so much. I mean, again, thank you so much to all of you. This has been a very, very um, useful and healthy discussion that we had today. So I will be sharing the recording on our YouTube channel. So again, please, you know, feel free if you have anything else that you want to share with us, you know, just get in touch with me. If you have any specific topics that you want to explore further, please get in touch with me as well so we can arrange um, a similar webinar in the future. Because like I said, I want the whole idea is to have a session like this every week so we can get together, just be very informal, just, you know, have a chat, try to share some tips with one another so that, you know, we, we can help and collaborate one another. So thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Thank you. And I, I hope to see you guys again next week. Can you share the link?